Hello and welcome everybody. Coming at you today from Australia. And while I am in a brand new continent, uh, I did bring some familiar items with me. Of course, I have the very first ever t-shirt sold by Andy Thrax Mining, fellow YouTuber if you don't know. And of course, this water bottle. I actually got this while mining out in BC when I was living out of my trailer doing some winter sniping. Ben bought me this and I've had it for a little over six months. I just refill it with tap water. Ah, Sydney tap water seems to pass the test. But yeah, it's a little bit of comforts from home while I'm down here. Basically in this video, what I want to talk to you guys about is high banker classification, uh, screens, screen sizes versus grizzly how to get really fine grizzly bar spacing. I've got some ideas and I kind of just want to basically just sort of freestyle this video because my laptop uh, decided to die on me. So it's, it's out getting fixed and I don't want to have to do a big edit, but I do want to throw out some content this week just to make sure I'm keeping up with my YouTube duties, of course. So here's the thought. Right now, the high banker I'm using is for this ultra fine prairie dust gold. It's very fine, it's very flat, and it requires a low water slope and flow in order to basically keep it from washing out of the sluice. So if you have very little water flowing through the sluice, you're gonna need uh, a fairly tight classification because there isn't enough energy to wash larger gravel and especially rocks out of that sluice. And of course, if you need to wash larger rocks and gravel out of the sluice, you have to turn up your water flow, at which point you potentially lose more gold. The other issue is that when you have multiple sizes traveling in the same sluice flow, the larger rocks will move slower than the smaller rocks. And then so as that rock is rolling down, the water is traveling faster than the rock and it sort of digs under and scours out stuff that would otherwise be caught in your matting, whether you, you are using uh, miner's moss with expanded, which is what I'm currently using, or any other type of mat, having tighter classification is typically better for fine gold. Now, I'm just gonna pick you guys up here so I'm not squatting down the entire time. Um, my current high banker, what I did is I went out and I tested it, like, I, I meant to be mining all year, but <laughs> unfortunately I, I managed to get out for a five day trip, and then I haven't had a chance to get back out mining yet. Hopefully there's gonna be a lot of mining to come here, but on the five day trip, I brought two different screen sizes. I think one was 3 16 and one was a quarter inch. So I noticed that the thicker, uh, larger screen spacing let water flow through it slightly easier. I had the screen set up a little bit too steep, so making that screen flatter, I don't think that would be an issue, but it's it's easier to use a coarser screen you can eat more easily get stuff through a smaller screen area so that's that's a benefit to that providing you don't lose your recovery and i tested recovery on both setups and i actually found that my recovery was really really good regardless of the screen so to a point you can use a larger screen if you can there's no advantage to using a smaller screen beyond the point of better recovery so the larger screen is sort of what I'm going to go with at this point. I could potentially try one size larger screen and see if that has any effect. But one of the things I noticed is just looking at the sluice box behind the little metal diamonds, what was being collected with the smaller screen, there was just black sand and sand. However, with the larger screen, you could see some tiny little pebbles in there. So you could actually tell the texture of stuff that was being caught had gone up a size with that larger screen. On this flat, lazy prairie river with fine gold dust, um, flat, flaky gold dust, let's just call every river the North Saskatchewan River for the heck of it, although that's not the only river that I mine. Um, that particular river, the black sand is limited in its size. You won't find large black sand in that river. And so regardless of the screen, it's not really going to cause me any issues. However, for example, um, I'm trying to extrapolate using one of these machines in other areas. And if you're over on like the Similkameen or Tulameen River, you get black sand chunks like the size of baseballs and all the way down to gravel and pea gravel and your black sand is all sorts of sizes. And so potentially you would have an issue where using the slightly larger screen 
the larger rocks that are coming in are now black sand rocks, which are gonna potentially cause an issue for gold recovery. Maybe it'll actually help gold recovery. I don't know, but that's something to consider, which is why I don't want to just go to a larger screen for the heck of it, um, just because it works for me in my area. But it is worth testing because obviously the larger screen you can go with, the better chance you have of capturing any nuggets that might be in your area. For example, Fraser River, there's a low chance that you'll find some, you know, nuggets, little pickers. And I think that of the two screen sizes I used, the larger screen, I'd be happy to know that on the Fraser River, I'm going to capture pretty much all the little pickers and nuggets and not really worry about it. But obviously, if you can get away with the larger screen, that's probably what I would do at this point. However, when it comes to organic material, screens have a bit of trouble with that. Even if it's in the form of a trommel, like you'd need some sort of a brush to, to keep washing that screen off. And so that's where a grizzly can be really helpful. And a grizzly is just a bunch of bars and everything slides off those bars. Or if it doesn't slide off the bars, you can grab your shovel, touch the stuff and just drag it down. Whereas with a screen, you need a brush so that you can actually, you know, brush the stuff off. It's not terrible, it's, it's workable, but a grizzly has an advantage there. I did make a grizzly and my recovery was still half decent, but I could tell that there were like rocks this big getting through that grizzly, even though the grizzly spacing was one eighth of an inch. The reason is the bars are a little bit flexible and the bars of this grizzly happened to be about a foot long. So you got 30 centimeters of this flexible bar. By the time it gets to the bottom, a chunkier rock can just slip right through that gap, get into your sluice box, cause that scouring to happen. And so it wasn't really ideal. Now, what I'm hoping I can do is if I made that grizzly shorter, say six inches, it wouldn't flex as much. It would have a little bit tighter classification and that would work really, really well for, you know, keeping this tight classification in my sluice box, keep all that fine gold. And yet I can still shed the organic material a little bit easier. Problem is six inches of grizzly, it's not gonna let everything drop through that grizzly. So what I was thinking is I could have multiple grizzlies, like a six inch grizzly here, one underneath it, a third one potentially. And you could even change the angle of these grizzlies similar to the curved screen that I'm currently using on my high banker. Now, the biggest issue I see right off the top is how the heck do you build all of these grizzlies? That would be a huge labor intensive thing to do. Um, it's not super easy to weld those little fine bars together. But then I was thinking, I'm getting my high banker legs laser cut out. And while it is expensive to do, getting one of those little leg brackets cut is a little over $100. But getting 40 of them, I could bring that price down to, I think it was like $13 a piece. And so working with scale, I would be able to bring the price down of actually laser cutting a grizzly. So picture like a six inch long comb and each bar of the grizzly could actually be tapered narrower as it gets to the end so that any gravel going down there, it's getting a wider and wider gap. So you wouldn't get any plug ups and you know, it would just be a really good design. And then if I got enough of these at scale printed, initially I would have to test it and just cough up the money and be like, please make me a couple of these to test. Uh, but eventually I could actually print out a bunch of these sort of comb grizzlies and mount like one or two or three in a row and actually have some really good tight classification. But with the advantages of a grizzly being that the organics could just get sort of brushed off really, really easily without the disadvantage of, you know, too much flex causing bigger rocks to go through and affect your gold recovery. So that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Uh, I'd really like to hear your opinion in the comments. I know there's a lot of really good ideas out there. I still read all of the comments in these videos and well, I will do a follow up to this video when I actually have some stuff to test and show you. Uh, I, I kind of want to hear your feedback now because it, it does actually affect kind of how I might approach this. There's some good ideas out there. I'd love to hear them. But that's my idea is laser cut out of the 12 inch or sorry, the 12 gauge stainless steel, um, sort of like a six inch long comb, mount that as a grizzly, put a couple in a row, potentially at varying angles to match that you know, curved screen that I have and see if that is an effective solution. One of the downsides I potentially see is that because it is a flat plate, the top of every grizzly bar is flat. And if that grizzly bar has a flat top, water might be more likely to just shoot right over the top of those grizzly tines. I'm hoping I can sort of 
get around that by either offsetting the first grizzly and the second grizzly so that like the grizzly of like the tines of one go on top of the holes of the other and then that might help and also if one grizzly at the end of the grizzly it'll have like maybe a half inch gap underneath it so the water will drop down and change angle to hit the next grizzly Australian birds <laughs> um, so I think there's some potential that this like multi-stage uh, laser cut grizzly could work for me um, of course whether it's a fine grizzly or a fine screen, you still run into the issue that you're not going to capture big nuggets. And you could go crazy thinking of like, okay, you've got your, your, your hopper, a coarse grizzly goes down a really steep coarse sluice, which then hits a fine grizzly, which comes back this way down a wider sluice. I've built one like that before. It actually worked really well, but it's bulky and I'm really trying to keep the size down. So given the form factor of my existing sluice box, I've got a fairly long hopper, and then I've got the grizzly or screen area, and then I've got the sluice underneath. What if in the hopper, the, the bottom six inches of that hopper, you never shovel there, it's sort of under where the spray bar is, that's basically just an eight inch wide sluice. And because I've got the double level sluice underneath, the, the top eight inch sluice actually has a, a lot of water flow. So I'm running 40 gallons per minute through this sluice, which to 24 inch wide sluice at the bottom, really slow, captures the fine gold. But at the top eight inch section, 40 gallons per minute in an eight inch wide sluice, that can move a lot of material. What if I put a raised expanded right up there? Then when I shovel in, that's your nugget trap in the hopper itself before it even gets to the grizzly. And so I'd like to try that. I would have to do it out of steel, I believe, because if I put aluminum up in the hopper, it would just get crushed and beat down. But yeah, raised expanded steel up in the hopper, and then I've actually got some nuggets, so I can, I can test this. I make sure to put some catch trays under there and see, do nuggets just get caught in that bottom section of the hopper because the hopper's so long, it turns into a sluice box, an unclassified sluice box, but it should still capture big nuggets. And then you hit the screen, and then everything drops through there, and then you get all your fine gold underneath. So it's sort of like the best of both worlds. Um, not sure if this is actually gonna work, but those are some ideas I'm sort of throwing out there. Anyways, that's all I got for you. I'd, I'd love to hear your feedback on like the multiple stage grizzly. Should I even spend the money and get this laser cut out and see if I can actually make that work? Um, again, this video, I don't really want to edit this video because my laptop died so I'm waiting for that laptop to get repaired and I just need like a, a no edit video to put out there plus I've been thinking about this for the last week here and <laughs> I just really wanted to kind of put all my thoughts together into one area like this um, basically I'm just looking behind me there are some Australian birds here I'll uh, point the camera out there and and just sort of leave the video with this these are called ibis, and uh, the majestic ibis is known affectionately to Australians as bin chickens. So we'll just have a little look there. Quite a unique looking bird. They're fairly quiet. Um, the cockatoos around here are absolutely majestic, but when they open their mouths, they just scream. Rah! Yeah, there you go. Some bin chickens in the background. Hanging out in Australia. Be back in Canada in a couple days. And uh, until then, cheers and thank you for watching. You can tell these are Australian birds because they're upside down. And they're very beautiful and majestic until they open their mouths. Some would say they're a little less polite than Canadian birds. That's one cockatoo saying to the other cockatoo, I like you, let's make more cockatoos. And there seems to be a whole lot more of them hanging out here. <laughs>